Welcome to the show, folks. This is Wrestling Changed My Life. Here we go. No, I think the biggest thing, I think the word wrestling, you know, it's the closest contact that you have in competition. You know, and I think literally it means to struggle. We can endure anything and adapt and pivot and change. Wrestling gave us that ability. I would say nothing in life has impacted me more than the things wrestling has taught me in terms of self-reflection, resilience. Toughness. Some guys have it, some guys don't. Adversity, 100%. How to pick myself up and be a man after I failed. And everything that has shaped my life and where I'm at today would not be there without the values and basically the, the lessons I've learned through the sport of wrestling. For me, wrestling saved my life because it, it allowed me to focus and channel my energy. We're fortunate if you wrestled because if you wrestled, natural talent helps, but it's, it's 5% of the ingredient. It pales in comparison to heart and technique and effort. It humbled me, taught me humility. Nothing can hit, humble you more than wrestling. I think it's the learning to adapt, right? You learn, you learn how to adapt, you learn how to solve problems. You know, if I look back at my time, that's good wrestling. If it gave me one thing more than anything else, it's mental toughness. Welcome back to Wrestling Changed My Life. This is your host, Ryan Warner. Ladies and gents, I'm in a Capital One Cafe right now, so please forgive the poor mic quality as well as the background noise. But we have a great guest today. It's Nate Carr, three-time national champ for Iowa State, Olympic bronze medalist. In this episode, we talk about Nate's epic rivalry with Kenny Monday. They wrestled a ton of times. We also talk about growing up in a family with 16 siblings. Five of those were Division I All-Americans, which is an NCAA record for the Carr family. We also talk about wrestling for the great Harold Nichols and some of those Iowa-Iowa State battles of the early 80s. Bane of the week time, and it goes to our good friend Jim Scar, president of Hall's Window Center out in Rancho Cordova, California. Thank you for tuning in, Jim. Last but not least, this episode is brought to you by the Wrestling Changed My Life store. Please go to store.wrestlingchangedmylife.com for any podcast merch if you want to support the show. If not, no problem. We appreciate you tuning in. And that's it, folks. Let's give it up for Nate Carr. So let's just start at the beginning. What was life like for you growing up in, in Erie, PA? What was your family like, your mom and dad? <laughs> well, my I have awesome parents. And, you know, my dad was a minister, and he also was a foreman at General Electric. And pretty much my mom uh, stayed home, of course, uh, raised the kids. And my dad was a pastor. So pretty much it was just school church family yeah. yeah those are the i had uh lee kemp on he talks about kind of a similar time and reminds me of my grandparents where that's just a that's a good type of people at that generation that's they right worked. you know what i mean i like that about people. that's right you could go to my house today and my mom would say all you have to do is say oh i know your son oh come on in <laughs> <You know so. laughs> now is this the generation where the neighbors could discipline the kids just as much as the parents. Exactly, could. you could. That's right, for sure. You could get disciplined by the neighbor two houses down. Yes, I love it. So, where do you <laughs> fall in the chain of uh, five All Americans? Are you the youngest, the oldest? No, no, I'm right in the middle. Like I'm actually in the middle of the family, and so, so we would. I'll just start with Fletcher was the first All American, then Joe. Then Jimmy, and then me, and then Michael. And Michael actually wrestled for me at West Virginia University and was All American for me. And then my brother Joe was an All American for my brother Fletcher. Oh, wow. Okay. I know it's crazy. Yeah. It is crazy. Now, was it you or Jimmy who made the world team at 16? And Right. So- so Jimmy probably actually made the world team at uh, 15, right? Yeah, 15 because he was 16 <laughs> going on 17. I don't know. It's crazy. Like he won the junior worlds. Then I think he made the senior world team like maybe the same year. I'm not sure. But it's crazy stuff that he did. He, he was definitely a prodigy. I mean, I know Colot talks about him a lot. 
because when Colot was little, I was, you know, training him a little bit. And I think his record was, he wanted to beat my brother's record. And that's why he went to the Midlands in high school. Because my brother won the Midlands in high school and when he was a junior and beat the defending NCAA champion um, from Northwestern. <laughs> now, he's older or younger than you, Jimmy? He's older, yes. Okay. He's so older. it's easy to see why it was tough. I just got beat up a lot. <laughs> Man. So obviously there's a, there's a bit of talent that comes with it, but there's no way you get five D1 All-Americans without – a love for the sport and a crazy work ethic. Yeah. So how old were you when you got started? And like, what do you think separated you and your brothers? I, you know from what? Rest? Well, you know, my, my brothers were always, they were wrestling. I mean, they were watching, you know, back then, I think it was the eight millimeter, whatever, watching the wrestling, they're watching the Russians on the sheets, bed sheets. And, you know, and basically they wrestled and I just, you know, I was just around it. You know, that we wrestled in the living room, you know, tore up my mother's furniture and, you know, would throw each other on the couch, you know, just to, you have to do a correct throw to make sure they hit the pillow, you know, but, uh, but yeah, so we just wrestled in the house and so I was always around it and I probably started, I don't know, like 11, 12 and I, I was, uh, I was just okay, you know, because my brothers wrestled, I could get in some matches, you know. But I could take people down, but I couldn't get away. <laughs> <laughs> and back then, they didn't have the circuit of wrestling that they do now. Nowhere near it, right? Right, exactly. So I just, yeah, just the high school wrestling, just got in some matches. And did yeah. you wrestle in the summer, too, in practice, or was it just the high school season for you? Yeah. Oh, you mean when I was in high school? Yeah, like what was your regiment like in high school? Were you wrestling all the time, just training and working out? Oh yeah, no, no. Well, once I got to high school, you know, I was I was into it big time. So no, I I wrestled all the time, I, but I didn't win the junior nationals until my senior year. And uh, from my my senior year, from my first match all the way to the end of the junior nationals, I went a hundred and seven and one, and my only loss was in Greco Roman finals. Wow. So at that point, so I wrestled a lot. You were all bought in, completely obsessed with that. Oh, right. No, I was good then. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was definitely okay. <laughs> was there any doubt you weren't going to go to Iowa State? Well, you know, it's a funny story, but Iowa, Dan Gable the, and Jay Robinson were the first guys to recruit me. And I was going there, and, you know, Nichols came into the picture, you know, after them, but... I was really sold on going to Iowa because, you know, they were sending me pictures of Chris Camo and how tough he was. And, you know, so I was, I was going. And then my mom, just to make the story short, my mom uh, had a dream after meeting, after meeting Coach Nichols and talking to Gable on the phone. Uh, she had a dream that I should go to Iowa, Iowa State. Yeah, because Coach Nichols was more, he was older uh, more mature, and I think my mom even actually fell asleep on the phone with Gable. What? But, um, <laughs> yeah. Dan was Mrs. like, Nate, I think your mom's asleep. I think I said that. Yeah, I think Mrs. so. Mrs. Carr but, fell asleep talking to Dan Gable. But, uh, I, I'm pretty sure, yeah. But oh, so, my God. So anyways, so anyways, my mom had this dream that I should go to Iowa State, and so it was a spiritual background. I was, I was like, okay, Mom, because... She said some things to me that have come to pass, you know. Mom knows best. And, right? So I was like, Mom, I respect that, and I, I'm really listening to you, but it's my choice, and I'm going to Iowa still. And then she had to dream again. I was like, forget it. Oh, I'm going wow. to Iowa State. <laughs> now, did your brothers go to Iowa State too? Yeah, I did have two. Uh, Michael was the All-American. Solomon and Michael went to Iowa State as well. Okay. Where did Jimmy yeah. go? Jimmy went to Kentucky because he wrestled for my brother. He was there uh, with Joe because oh, my wow. brother Joe and Jimmy and Fletcher was the head coach. I mean, Kentucky, wow. they were ranked like sixth in the country. I mean, they had some studs. They had Delegata, Ricky right? Delegata. Yeah, Delegata's from there, yeah. Man. Harold Smith. I mean, there were some studs, man. Rick Renfis, C.D. uh there was another mock, Kurt Mock, I think. Yeah, I mean, Tim Macedas. 
And th- those were just Pennsylvania studs, you know. Right. Well, it's crazy you went to uh, Iowa State over Iowa because even though Iowa State was a traditional power, like when you got there, the late 70s, early 80s, that was the Iowa era. And you actually That's wrestled right. Scott Trezino in the finals, so you, you would have been wrestling Dude. in the wrestle-off, man. Uh, no, man. <laughs> We're like, hey, well, I think on my recruiting trip there, you know, because, I, I mean, Kerber, there was a bunch of guys that came, and we uh, were all there at the same time because I remember Gable uh, sitting us down and saying something like, gentlemen, if all of you come, we will complete our dynasty. I'm pretty sure he said that and set us down. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Now, was Big uh, Big John Marks there at that time still? <laughs> Pardon me? Was Big John Marks there at the time, kind of running the recruiting things? For Iowa? Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure. Man, that's but, that's crazy well, what, you guys all were there, though. Who was on that trip again, you said? Oh, it might have been Kerber, Selesky, Little Trezino. Uh, Farina was there. Because remember, I, Farina went to Iowa State with me. And I had just beaten him in the junior national finals. Wow. So Kerber, Selesky, I forgot some of the other guys. But it was, it was all studs, man. Mm-hmm. It was all studs. And so you get to Iowa State, and like, at one point, do you start to to make the transition to say, "I was a great high school wrestler, one of the best at my time. Now I want to be an Olympian." Like, did you always know you wanted to be an Olympian, or did that only start later? For you? No, you know, you know, I, I tell a story to you know when I'm teaching the, the young guys, or I get to share and encourage the young wrestler. But when I was little, I don't like eleven. Well, because I'm a little younger than Jimmy, like maybe five years, but I got to wear his Olympic uniform to a tournament. And I kid you not, just to keep it short, the warm-up at least got me to the finals. (laughs) 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 So I have this talk, Russell the Man's Body Never His Name. You know, because the dudes wrestled the warm up and that, they just rolled over for me. <laughs> that is so funny that you say that. <laughs> they saw that, they're like, I'm done with that, dude. I'm not, I want no part of right. that. Right. So, but so, so that, that was, yeah, that was. But so, crazy like, you had story. that around. So, your brother, what, what Olympic team was he on then? 68? 72. Or? Oh, 72. 72. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow, I didn't realize that. He was a stud. And I think he beat Olympians before that. I mean, he was winning open tournaments like 13, 14, 15. Like, I'm just saying. And did he he win the NCAAs a couple times too then? No, no. As soon as he got in college, he was was, uh, a little wild. (laughs) I mean, he was hanging around with with all the older guys. Rick Sanders. He was Rick Sanders was one of his best friends. That's a wild Sanders was kind of crazy a little bit, yeah. So he died in a car crash over there. That's right, right. He's kind of so, a crazy guy, yeah. Right. So, anyways, he had some interesting uh, influences, but just really good, unbelievable. unbelievable, for sure, for sure, the best high school wrestler of all times. And you know, I mean, who's going to be the national champion in their junior year? Right, right. You know what? I think he was doing so much freestyle. He lost to a guy. He wanted his junior year, but I think his sophomore year, he he was doing a bunch of freestyle moves, <laughs> wrestling folk style, and he ended up losing to this guy Henry Green. And you could you had to win it to go back then. And so Henry Green went on and won the state championship. Then my brother won it the next year after that. Oh, wow. But he was clearly the best guy, yeah. Oh, for sure. Some people say that was the best match they've ever seen, I mean, up there in uh, Altoona, Pennsylvania. Man, and PA is obviously one of the best states, the best state, I'll say it. Right. Um, and so you get to Iowa State, you have a, a tremendous a tremendous freshman year, and you, you're wrestling a guy named Roger Frizzle at the NCAA tournament. That's right, Frizzle, yeah. Didn't know the name <laughs> until I went down uh, the Nate Carr rabbit hole. <laughs> Just uh, let's just start there. Like, how did what happened? Um, what round was it? Were you winning? Were you losing? You know, what all happened there? No, no, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I was winning, and, and Roger Vazell was a junior national champion as well. Great competitor, four, competitor, competitor, four-time All-American, and you know, I, I was 
I had just beat them in the big. I beat them in the Big Twelve, the Big Eight, and then I think I, I I broke my hand in the dual meet, and so I lost to them by one point. Actually, you know, because I locked my hands to them, trying to hold them. But beat them in the Big Eight, and then wrestle them at the Nationals, and you know I was ready, winning five one. But he did catch me in a spladel. And, you know, because I had great balance. I was standing up. I bent over, and he went across my back. You know, I had one leg in and went across my back and just tore my hamstring out. What round was that? And the quarters, probably. Wow. Yeah, yeah, something like so that. So he caught you. And... And... Yeah, so he, and, and I was still trying to wrestle, and I ended up losing to a guy from Rutgers, in overtime, and the reason I lost is because I cross-faced him too hard. And he got a point for unnecessary roughness. <laughs> I read that, and I go, who's that ref? I want him dead right now, all right? Who does that in a blood round match? Oh, and the my. guy was like, I think he was Rutgers' first, you know, first All-American, but he was like, I know I couldn't beat you, but, you know. Was Coach he was Nichols going crazy lane. or what? Nah, I don't know. I just remember this, and this is really pivotal. I think really critical and germane to my success after that. I'm limping out of the arena with Coach Nichols. It's just him and I. And I said something. I said, you know, because I was wrestling good for a freshman. I mean, I actually thought I could win it. I had lost to Ryan, Andy Ryan, the eventual champion, by one point, you know, in a duel me. And so... I was leaving the arena, and I said, you know, Coach Nick, I'll win this next year. And his response, I know. And we went out in an eight. And yeah. I came back the next year and won. And and then a couple more after that. So. Won the next three. Let's not, be, uh, let's yeah. not downplay it. <laughs> <laughs> what was a so. – you know, I, I'm doing a – I'm producing a documentary now on – uh, a, a podcast documentary on the Gable era of coaching. And I, I couldn't find a lot on coach Nichols in terms of like, what was he like with the a athletes? Because Gable told me it was strictly athlete coach. Um, you seem to maybe have a little bit of a closer relationship with coach Nichols. I mean, what was he like as a leader and what, what are some of the things you learned from him? No, you know, you know, one thing I would say about coach Nichols and just knowing all the wrestlers that have come through is that he loved people. You know, because I think, you know, I think when Carl Adams, I think there was more racism and stuff going on. But Coach Nichols, you know, loved his athletes, treated them right. And I just, he was a gentle, loving guy. Didn't really talk a lot, you know. Mm. Matter of fact, we would actually, he would grunt a little bit. And, um, but just to, just to get <laughs> a good but really good with people. So when my parents met him, they loved him. He actually came back and attended my sister's wedding. Two of my sisters got married on the same day. And what? so he came back to the wedding. Wow. Yeah. I mean, so he really was really good with people. And, you know, he, he was a national champion himself. And for sure, Coach Nichols was a guy that loved wrestling, loved the sport, promoted the sport, and gave his all to the sport. I mean, he had the best camps, you know, when people weren't doing camps. Yeah. He sold wrestling gear, right? I mean, the guy was everywhere. He was like an entrepreneur. Uh, I've seen those old yeah, tapes. Yeah, for sure, big time. Where it's yeah, like he a was silent actually on tape. David Letterman. How about he was on David Letterman? And David Letterman was giving him a hard time because when he called Coach Nick, he was like, hello. And then Coach Nichols said, Nello. And then David Letterman <laughs> said, I've never heard hello with an in. It was funny. And he was like, Nello. It was, it was crazy. So, But he was but yeah, uh, no, no, good to hear that he was a little guy. bit more of a people person than that. That's good. Yes. Yeah. yeah, people person, great recruiter, right? And I think he had – he was so well known and had did such a great job uh, with Iowa State wrestling that everybody knew him. And when he came to recruit you, you know, parents parents loved him. And I think Nick really figured out that if I could get the top three guys in the country, my chances of winning a team title is pretty good. 
So I think he tried to do that at every weight. Wow. Right? So did he come out to PA to recruit you, or was it just phone calls? Yeah, back yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Like Gable did the phone calls, Nichols showed up. Wow. So my parents actually saw him face to face. You know, I think Les Anderson uh, came to watch me wrestle at the Classic. And uh, I think Coach Nichols, I mean, this is the story they told me. Coach Nichols goes, Les said, hey, this guy's quick. And then Coach Nichols goes, uh, is he as is quick as Carl? And then Les said, quicker than Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true but, uh, that uh, Bob Siddons was refing a match of you one time and told you to slow down during the match, or is that uh, Can folklore? you believe he said that? Is that no, true? that's true. Can you, I was like, excuse me? You know. Yeah. He actually told me to slow down. You're moving too fast. <laughs> he did. Can you, <laughs> I kid you not. Like, who would oh, make stuff up like that? Man. Oh, man. What What it's was that, true. like a like an all-star meet or something, or? No, I think I was just I was wrestling a guy from you and I. Oh, in a and duel I was meet. Oh. A guy from you and I. Okay. Pardon me. I it said was, so. It was, it was like a, a real meet. duel meet. Okay. Yeah, it was like a duel meet, and Alan said one time. Alan told me that he was refereeing one of my matches, and the guy shot, and he said I just propelled myself in the air, and I was behind the guy. Right. <laughs> Alan <laughs> said he went over to the side judge. He goes, "Hey, did you see that?" <laughs> <laughs> Man. So Alan told me the story. It's funny. That is it's crazy. Funny. So, <laughs> I mean, did you uh, did you love? Were you one of those guys that loved wrestling, or you enjoyed it because you were really good at it? No, I I loved it. I think my brothers were telling me, "Hey, you could be better than all of us," and I didn't have a problem working hard. And some people said, you know. People will always hear people say, well, this guy's talented, and right. but this guy works hard. Well, I'm going to tell you this. the ability, Having the ability to work hard is a talent because not everybody does it. But, I, uh, uh, yeah, I, I didn't mind working hard. And then I listened. I listened well. And I was coming to college, one, to get a degree. And then here was my statement coming in, my second statement coming into school. One, get the degree. The second one was, man. If I could win a national championship, it would be unbelievable. And so my goal was just to not let anybody stop me from going to class and showing up for practice. And uh, that's what I did. That, uh, that's what I, and then I just pursued it. And you had that, fam- that strong family background, too, to kind of serve as the foundation. That's right, right? They, they had me ready. My brothers had me ready. And you know what I think they knew? Because I wasn't going to Kentucky with Fletcher. And I, I think they knew that, hey, wherever this guy goes, he can win. Mm. And it was true. And so when you were there on campus, what was a typical workout like with Coach Nichols? Like how much has it changed since then? to the practice you were leading or involved with today at Iowa State? What does that look like? Right. You know, I, I, I think, again, when, when I was getting recruited, Chris Campbell, who left Iowa and came to Iowa State, so he actually followed me to Iowa State. To wrestle so or to coach So that was there? great. To coach. Okay. And to train. Gotcha. So I had Chris Campbell, awesome. Willie Gadsden, awesome. Charlie Gadsden, Awesome. And Kelly Ward was still here for a little bit when I got here. So, uh, but the room, the structure of it, Coach Nichols would come in and teach, and then Les Anderson, of course, uh, great guy. Les Anderson did a lot of the teaching. Coach Nichols did a lot of the teaching. And Coach Nichols is just a, so not only was he good with people, but he was tough. He was a renaissance man, right? <laughs> I remember I was working out with him, and I actually busted his dentures. <laughs> and... And, and actually, and he just like, so his mouth was bleeding, right? He reaches up, puts his hand in there, looks at the blood on his fingers, and he looks at me and goes, Car, you're tough like me. <laughs> 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 but wow. yeah, no, we, we, you know, they would, they would teach, so it was structure. They would teach, go over the moves, and then pretty much after that, we beat each other up. Which is tough, hard practice I mean, we'd at wrestle. that point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Perry Humble was in there. That guy's. I mean, these guys are in great shape. I mean, we wrestle on the wall, off the wall, you know, just, 
You just didn't stop. I mean, we probably could wrestle, I mean, a good hour straight, easy, and, you know, plus some. It was hot in there, too, wasn't it? And it was hot, and we had on all the red gear, right? The Cyclone, <laughs> all the Cardinal, just, yeah, everything was red in there, looks like, you know, so. But we was a great team. Uh, I was part of, you know, I was glad to be here. And Did you wrestle Dave Brown at all at that time? Yes, Dave Brownie was tough. Actually, so Dave Brownie, like we did the inner squad, and Dave Brownie actually beat me by one point. Really? Right? Yeah. What year is this? Freshman and, year? My freshman year, yeah, okay. yeah. And then he beat me. We went. He would. St- he stayed up at one fifty, and then I think he beat me in the Northern Open by one. Wow. But by the end of the year, and he'll tell you this: by the end of the year, no, he couldn't touch me though. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, I was definitely getting better at a quick pace. You know, I just accelerated. I worked hard. I I was easy to coach. You know, I think Chris Campbell said I was one of the most conditioned athletes, you know, that he trained. You know, you tell me to run 10 miles, I'm going to do it. You know, stay here for another hour. I mean, I'm going to do it easy. I'm going to be the first one there, last guy to leave. You know, so I, I really didn't have a problem uh, working hard. So I was a hard guy to break. It was almost like you look forward to it at that point because you were just so focused on these goals. Yeah, I mean, it, I'm telling you, I just really took it to another level. And you know what I did good, too, that I, that I think was just a, a blessing, is that I read a lot. So I was reading about other champions. And so I think readers are leaders, and leaders are readers. And so, you know, when you read a book, you can get to a tough time you can get through a tough time because you read about how somebody handled a tough time that's in the same sport as you or something similar. And um, so I was hoping we get into that because I know you're big on like, positive self-talk and visualization, and you know that to me that all plays into the mentality th- of things because it wasn't like you were reading a book about wrestling technique; you were reading a book about other right. champions and how they thought. Right, actually, it's uh, psycho cybernetics was my first one of my first ones. Really? Well, I haven't heard of it. Yeah, that like my a stunts. Mentality? You can look it up, yeah. Okay. It's it just, you know, it just deals with yourself, how you look at yourself. And that's where it really changes it, you know, when you believe who the inner person is. And uh, What were some other books good. or my people son, you read about? Oh, Art of War. Um, and my, John Maxwell is one of my favorites, Failing Forward. Uh, Mind Gym right now. That's, that's I good. love Mind Gym. Oh. Chop, chop Wood. Have you read Chop Wood, Carry Water? Not yet. That's on the list, though. Coffee, be- Coffee Bean. <laughs> Coffee <laughs> Bean? I'll thinking. tell you what. That is one of the craziest stories I've ever heard about in my life. That but, book. That but it's crazy. pretty good, though, right? It's it's really good. <laughs> I actually I met that guy that's in there that went to prison. What's it? Damon? Damon West. Um, yeah, I met him. Really? Not too long ago. Is that, do you yeah, do nice that guy. kind of thing now, like a, a motivational circuit? Do you do that? Uh, no, I was just somewhere and he was there and I met him, but I, I have heard him. Man. But I do speak a lot. Yes, I do speak a lot. I, I love that. I love encouraging people and, you know, and especially for me from a ministry uh, background as well. Uh, I, I, love, I love doing that. I love encouraging. Like my life statement is a, that I'm a professional encourager. I love that. Like, what if we're on your, if we're a part of one of your sermons, or if you're, in, you know, if you're in uh, in front of an athletic team, like, what are some of the like two to three things you hit on in terms of like the mental side of things and and uh, self belief well, and that think, kind of thing? I think one, just a couple of things. I think a lot of times, I think coaches and athletes will always make adjustments on the physical skills. Mm-hmm. Right, keep your elbow in, keep your knees bent, but they never, they never tackle what the guy, the athlete was thinking before he went out there, or during. And so sometimes they, they well, athletes spend a lot of time increasing reps on the physical skill set, when really they should be doing a lot of reps from the neck up. Mm. changing the way they think. So I believe in, you know, you rep doing a lot of reps from the neck up. Okay, so, and I think that's important. That's huge. Then I like, 
I do what I call purpose-driven practices. And that's where you do a bunch of mental reps and you show up at a practice without telling your partner and you try to get out what you've been thinking. So going into it with like a, a plan that, hey, over the past day I've been visualizing this. That's right. So if I'm wrestling Ryan, I'm going to control his right arm. I'm going to hit him with a single leg. I'm going to hit his head a hundred times. I'm going to be intense. I'm not going to quit. Right? And I'll just pick the different things to work out that, that I want to work on. But mostly it's going to be my effort and attitude than the skill. Mm. I love that kind of thing. I could, Right? I just think it's so... How crazy is it that everyone says at the top level... It's 99% mental, but the work we're doing is 99% physical. There you go, right? So they gotta, they, you, so you, you, you have to do, you, you have to do both. And then you, I, I use a word that I made up, you know, that I call, you have to wrestleize it. <laughs> <laughs> what, and what does that mean for you, coach? Basically, you know, say I'm say the coach is working on me with a double leg, and he goes, "You've got to explode! You've got to see through the man, right?" So I'm hitting the technique, I'm hitting the the skills right, but I'm thinking explosion. I'm thinking blow through them, and just even making sounds makes seems like it makes you move quicker. But anyways, you know, so some things you just gotta figure out a way that you could personalize it. You know, yep. So that's my wrestletize it. So were you doing this kind of visualization back in your competitive days? Uh, yes, I, I, I did. I, uh, yes, definitely. I remember being in the finals with Kenny Monday, who was like Ooh. a serious nemesis. Oh, now we're talking and, now. And, and I think he had pitted me in the big eights. I, 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 he definitely pitted me in the big eights, but I, I can't remember which year. So anyways, and we had some intense off the mat stuff as well. Just you know, hey, I'm gonna get you, and you know. So when I'm wrestling at the national finals here in Hilton, he had beaten me maybe twice, and I was the defending champion. And I and I think Kenny might have been even ranked number one then. And I remember, it, and I actually got hurt before that. So the story, I hurt my elbow. And it was so bad that I could not even hold an empty Pepsi can. Mm. And I remember going to Coach Nichols. I'm going into his office to tell him that, out, Coach, I don't think I can wrestle. So you remember I told you Coach Nichols doesn't say a lot. He didn't say a lot of words. So I go into the office. He's writing a letter. So I'm sitting across from his desk. I come in. You know, hi, Nick. He doesn't say much. He just says, <clears throat> hi. Yeah, you know, and he's writing this letter. I sit down in the chair, so I'm waiting for him to kind of acknowledge me. So he writes for a while, just sitting there. Evidently, he's trying to get this thought out, and then he says, "What? What? What? What do you need? What's up?" And I said, "You know, Coach, I, I don't think my elbow's messed up. I've been, you know, getting treatment on it, but I don't think I'll be able to wrestle." And he looks at me, looks down, writes a couple words, looks back up at me, looks back at me, and says, "You'll be all right." <laughs> I kid, I'm serious. That is funny. Oh, well. So what happened? And so I sit there. That's it. No, I sit there. That was it. I sit there, and he didn't say anything else. And then I was like, "Well, I guess that's over." I just got up and left. So did you keep wrestling? Yeah, no, yeah, I wrestled. I won the championship. No. <laughs> oh man, those are the old days, so baby. Kept, <laughs> dude, so they kept putting pressure on it and kept facing it, and you know, I had it wrapped up. But you know what? Every match in the tournament, it just, I just, it just got better and better and better. So anyway, so now I finally, I wrestled Roger Verzell in the semis. I think he rolls me through one time, and I think I just stay on him. I not beat him because me and Monday we weren't losing to anybody else almost just so we're just kind of dominating the field and I make it to the finals and I and I got a lot of energy so I'm just bouncing around and so coach Gaston is going Nate sit down go rest get off your feet 
I was, and I said something to him like, Coach, other everybody else in this arena paid to get in to watch these matches. I wrestled here to watch these matches, and I'm watching the matches. So I watched all the matches, you know, all the way up to me. And I just remember saying, you know, because I really wanted to win bad. And I said to myself, the only way I'm going to lose to Kenny Money is if my neck is broken, both arms, both legs are broken. That's the only way he's winning. And they called my name to go out, and you had to run through under these swords they had. And I'm telling you, a spirit left me, and I was, like, ready for showtime. <laughs> Man. And we threw down. Wade Salas said it was, like, one of the best matches he's ever saw. <laughs> and this is an 82 or 83? This would be 82. Wow. I was going to say, before you brought it up. 81. 81 yeah. was your first one, right? Right, 81. And that was against Scotty. And then me and Scotty, I wrestled all these rough guys. Because Scotty, for some reason, didn't like me. <laughs> really? Of course, we were at the same weight. Yeah, I think when I was getting recruited, he was like, man, are you at 126? 126? he said something like, <laughs> what? Uh, no. You're 150, Dude, man. Come on. So I, you know what it was? Guess what? I, I knew he was, I thought he was scared of me right then. Yeah, totally. You know what I'm saying? And so when we wrestled, we threw down. And at one of the matches, I had beaten him early. In the first duel me, because Chris Camelton had me and Willie Gatson and Coach Nick and Les, I could go through a brick wall. So I was ready. I'm not like, I'm not going to breathe till next week. You know what I'm saying? We're and how excited were you to wrestle back then, man? Pardon me? How excited were you to wrestle back then, man? You must have just loved oh, yeah, no, the crowd. Well, the crowd was crazy, right? I'm talking, it could be freezing outside and there'd be no seats. Right, I mean, so the people were packing in, and Chris Camelton had me ready, and I beat him in the first duel meet eight two. I mean, I dominated him, and he was national runner up, and then he redshirted, and now he's back. It's his fifth, fifth year, so we're I'm going to wrestle him in Iowa. So we go to Iowa. It is cold, and I'm telling you, people are all over, all over the floor. There's like no room in the place. So I had to lose some weight, which is normal. So I go into, um, this is at the University of Iowa, the field house, and I'm going into the sauna, right? So I open the door, I go in the, I'm closing the door, and then somebody yells at me, hurry up and shut the door, car. I was like, and I turn around, it was Scott Terzino. <laughs> so I was like, who are you talking to? So we started wrestling each other in the sauna before the match. <laughs> Dude, you can't make that up. Are I'm you serious? You, true story. Oh Dude. my god! Who broke I mean, you guys so up? Some... No, we just said like, well, I think said, we'll get enough of that, right tonight. And I was like, poked him in the chest. Yeah, that's right. So what? So you go up to him, you go, man, who are you talking to like that? And that was it, man. Two alphas. Yeah. No, oh. so we were going at it. <laughs> I was gonna say, back in those days, what was the perception like if you were Iowa State wrestling at the Fieldhouse? Was it just straight you mean war? As the fans? I mean, like, you mean, yeah, I mean, like, if you, because I mean, you wanted to go to Iowa, then you didn't. So, it, but once you're at Iowa State, I mean, oh, are they the enemy at that oh, point, or what was it like? Oh, right, right. They didn't like me. I mean, I think, I mean, it, well, this is uh, this is true. When I decided to go to Iowa State, I was talking to Jay Robinson, and Jay said, he said, you'll never win a national championship. You'll never make an Olympic team. <laughs> he told me all this stuff. <laughs> Real, oh, so you got the chip on your shoulder. Pardon me? You got the chip on your shoulder at that point, you know? Right. So I really, when I wrestled Iowa, I really did extra. Yeah. Wow. So, so he did tell me later, he said, I told, he, he, he did tell me later, he said, Dan, that guy's going to kick our butt for four years. <laughs> <laughs> so so we, uh, we talked about well, it a little uh, bit earlier, but... If I mention the name Kenny Monday to you, like what what comes back from those memories, man? Because I didn't realize the extent of the rivalry until I uh, oh. did some research on you. So, what does that name come like? What comes to mind when I say that name? Uh, just that he's one of the toughest, most successful wrestlers ever in our country. That just does because I, I always give honor to whom honor is due, and uh, even his mom was tough. Like his mom came up to me after I beat him at. At Iowa State, and we were at like a after gathering, you know, just to get mm -hmm. together. And they were there, 
And Willie Gadsden was behind me, and I think his mom said, we're going to get you. We're going to get you next year. <laughs> Could you believe that? We haven't even, the tournament's just now over, and she's already saying, we're going to get you. And then, and then Willie Gadsden said, ma'am, I think your son should go another way. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but Kenny's mom was tough. When yeah. was the first time you guys wrestled, you and uh, Kenny? You know what? I wrestled them actually, uh, I want to say maybe maybe our sophomore, you know, the sophomore year, I wrestled them at the Great Plains or something. And I, I think I won like eight, two, something, something like that. I, like, I beat them pretty good, right? And you know what he told me? I'm going to get you next time. I was like, let me see. I had nine. You had one. Uh, yeah. And guess what? Next time we wrestled, we wrestled he beat me too. <laughs> Man. So, dude, that dude's a fierce competitor. What were some of the off the mat things that went down with you guys? I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't know. Just a little smack talk here and like there? He, yeah, just like, where, you know, he would say, where, you know, where's y'all man at or where's your boy at? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm going to beat him, you know. And uh, then we had some, you know, as we wrestled more, we just had some fierce, you know, like he couldn't be in the big eights and, you know. And I was telling him, we were talking afterwards, I was like, you know, you just, I was winning, you just caught me. He said, yeah, you was pinned before they caught, you know, just, I mean, it was intense. I was like, well, I just want to win nationals, you know, stuff like that. So. Right. Are you guys friends now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely okay. friends. Our sons have worked out together. We've done camps together. Yeah, we, Kenny's a great guy, great family, great sons. Yeah, just, I mean, I have just utmost uh, respect for him. He's, he's good. Yeah, he's so great good. Great competitor, oh great champion. God. But, yeah, that, you know, man, <laughs> we had some battles, though. And then uh, the last thing I want to ask you about before I let you go, Mr. Carr, is fast forward to 88. Well, first of all, who who beat you in 84? And then what, like, let's just start there. I was just right, curious Andy what Ryan, happened. Right, Andy Ryan, yes. So, so I, I uh, wrestled Andy Ryan. I made the world team, beat Andy Ryan. And, you know, I had an injury in my back, and I had to actually – get surgery, but they did like an injection then, like a papaya enzyme they would inject into the bone or, or into your uh, vertebrae. So I actually set out for the 83 Worlds in the hospital during the training camp and went over, got out of the hospital, and ended up placing the top eight. Okay. okay. Because, um, so, but I ended up beating Ryan and Seleski, and, and so... In 84, I was just, I, I think I was, I always tell people, you know, I i probably could have had more coaching because we were training ourselves then. And I beat Andy Ryan the first match, and for some reason, I just really lost my head. I was like, I'm going to kill him now. I'm going to crush him. When really, I just needed somebody to say, look, no, just remain calm. You know, just pick your shots and. But, you know, I didn't have anybody. So I went out and tried to throw him, to throw him, and he threw me. Boom. Then he, I went out there again, and he threw me again. So anyway, <laughs> oh, it was crazy. And then, then I just ended up losing to him. And one time, I think in the next match, because I won the first one, he won that one. Then in the next one, I'm pretty sure I had his leg hooked. And we're by the edge. The referee touches us. I said, okay, gentlemen, back to the center. And Ryan throws me. And they gave him the points. Oh, and that God. particular year, people were paying a lot of money to do. Like Randy Lewis, them ended up going, or oh, Lewis, yeah. and Leroy Smith, them, they went to court. People were fighting. But I, I didn't do any of that. I just really got hungry for 88, and I was like, I'm making it then. And I ended up beating, you know, beating Andre Metzger. I was going to say, did, did you just go too. on a, a tangent then from 84 on, like focusing on 88? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I really wanted it then, you know, and I was hungry. And, you know, I got there so easy. You know, I was like, oh, I'm going to go off for the Olympics. And there I was right at the top. So, um, you know, so when I lost like that, you know, I made sure that I was going to make it in 88. Yeah. And then is it true that you skipped the opening ceremonies in 88 to get ready, get yourself ready mentally and physically? You know, I can't even remember. <laughs> I can't. 
Well, I just wanted to, uh, to to thank you for your time today, sir. It was fun talking uh, talking about this stuff with you. The last question I always ask is, if you had to, to kind of summarize it, like how would how is how did wrestling change your life, or what has wrestling taught you over the years that you still take with you to this day? <laughs> 